Okay, it's still Hello Nigeria. My name is Olaraju Gregory, aka Larry J, and I have a guest here with me, and she goes by the name Olive, fantastic host, and um, she'll be my co-host for today. I'll be asking her lots of questions. I know you'll be confused because it's Olive that is meant to be talking, but this is Larry J speaking. Trust me, we are still on the same show. It's the Hello Nigeria. Hello, Nigeria. This is my own way to say hello, Nigeria. Thank you for inviting me to your show. I really appreciate it, Larry. You're welcome. Thank You're you welcome. so much. So, can we take back our position? <laughs> so, you just be the one to ask me the question. <laughs> okay, welcome back to Hello, Nigeria. Of course, you know that Larry is our special guest. Celebrity guest. He's an MC, an anchor, a comedian. You know, someone that is a big boy in this life. He used to do events in Nigeria and do events in the abroad. Oh, That's a small song for him. Man, it's really such a pleasure to have you, Larry. Thank you so much. One man. of Nigeria's foremost... MCs. Larry, how was, what was the original plan for you? Was MCing an original plan or was it hunger that helped you to discover your talents? No, no, I'm not one of those guys that say I was hungry and then I discovered I was funny. Nope, nope. I had good background. I had a fantastic background. When I say I had a fantastic background, not like I wanted to be something, well, everything I wanted to be, the subject wasn't working out for me. By the way, I, when I was in secondary school, I went to the art class. I went to the science class. It was when I got to SS3, I changed to art. Oh, really? So, yeah. I wanted to be um, a doctor. And then chemistry was not just, was not working for me. I baked chemistry. She didn't agree. I fake chemistry. <laughs> so <laughs> my father was like, why are you deceiving yourself? Every time your teachers come, they say you are scattering the class, you are scattering it. Cuckoo, go to art. I see not even commercial. And you know, then... There's this thing like art as students they are, are the smart. dumb. I don't even people. know who invented those. I don't know. I think it's a lie. And in case you are here, you are listening to us, it's a lie. It's a big art, lie. Art students are actually smarter because you need to you need to put like how I many books that do not concern you. All those literature you put it in your head. And some people will not do history on top. Come on now. I now say they should not run mental. That's why they are not that's why they are particularly good. For example, you. You did you 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 you, you are supposed to be something else, and you know. I mean, you will know. We were with your mates. <laughs> and no, I think guess you already you know. know. Yeah, we were with your mates on Saturday. <laughs> we, we were with your mates. So I was just speaking when we recognized the presence of all the uh, senior advocates and all the lawyers and all the... Uh, I'm like, yeah, see you, eh? But, but at the end of the day, in fact, my mates are gathered together right now as we speak at the 58th Annual Nigerian Bar Association Conference, and I'm here doing this work that I really like. That you really like? And um, you spent how many years not knowing what you like? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> God may not let us lose. Amen. But um, <laughs> I actually, I went to art, and then I, I literally went to study performing arts in Labisi on the Bajon University, and when I finished, I finished. Do you understand? And then it was not time to look for the work that my course can do. And then my mother remembered that there's nobody, then that year, there was nobody that was doing acting that made it in life. Do you understand? They were all struggling. In fact, some of them is my father that used to help them. My mother was not not really help yourself. So I did ITL. I went to professional hardcore ITL. I did um, PMP. I was a professional project manager at some point in my life. And then I realized I was struggling with all of this. And at some point, I just had to move to what I really love to do. So how was that move for you? What was the first thing you did that let you know you moved? OK, back then in school, we used to do stage drama, like stage play. And they would give me a very serious role. It would turn upside down. Like, um, we did this book, this one literature book back then in my secondary school. And I was meant to act as the king's spoke, spokesperson. So they were looking for what thrilled the whole school, what made me popular in secondary school. Then they were looking for a way to tell the king that his son is dead in the book, in the drama. So it was getting too late. We didn't plan it. I just... <laughs> When the conversation was getting too long, King, hey, the King goes, now, what's the matter? What's happening? I didn't know. I, Whoa, King, they don't know how to tell you that your son have died. That's what they are deliberating about. <laughs> and oh that, that, that was the beginning for me. And then we took it off from there. And then I just had to build on what I have. And here I am today. Now you're a comedian. And I would say, I'd like to ask you who your greatest influences are in Nigeria and internationally. Okay, my greatest influence. 
locally and internationally, I would say Bobby. I love him for his stories because I'm also a storyteller. And um, Didon, I love the fact that he goes deep. The parts that you've not imagined, that's where he goes to. I love that part of him. And I have some other actors like um, Don Baba Sue is one, he's, he's one of those people that anytime I watch him, I cannot but laugh. He'll make, he'll make fun of something at the most critical moment. And it's comedy. That's what makes him who he is. He has carved that niche for himself. Though we have not heard about him in a while, but he is doing, he did well then. And he still, will always be a legend when it comes to he's, comedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's one of those people that I literally sit down to watch when I was growing up. So, and Baba Salah and all of those people. Remember that big glass that pops out there? I enjoyed all of those. Papa just and the rest of them. Bam, you go it. So internationally, who would you say? I'm sure you're going to say Kevin Hart. And I'll now for you, and I'll mention his name again. Since you have called him, I cannot say, him, say his <laughs> name again. But I, I love the likes of Russell Peters. Um, I like um, this, this, this is my guy. What's his name? The one I already name? mentioned his name. No, Trevor. Trevor Noah. Okay. Trevor Noah is a fantastic guy. He's, I love the fact that he talks about the present and he says serious stuff, but you end up laughing at other people's predicaments at Trevor Noah's jokes. And he's just very on point for me. I love him for that. And oh, with all these people, no, I don't think I can make mistakes. There are lots of comedies. The face of comedy is changing, you know. Yes. Back in the day, comedy used to be you get one man, your your mama mess, your papa mess. Those were the kind of things. I think they used to call it wording, you worry. Yeah. You know, call it wording and yeah. the abyss. Those were the kind of things. But the face of comedy is starting to change. Now we still have a lot of that. There are lots yeah. of people who are still doing a lot of silly stuff yeah. to make people laugh. Yeah. But we're still see, we're now starting to see people doing a lot more research. Like you yeah. mentioned, what Trevor Noah is doing. Ali Baba is one of such that talks about books that he reads. Yeah. Bobby is one of the people who talks about, who uses trending political issues to, and to you know, make comedy. How would you fashion your own kind of comedy? I would fashion my own kind of comedy as real life comedy. Like, I, will, I might not necessarily pick on political, I might pick on political issues, but not, I don't do all this comedy that will tackle one person because I don't want to have anything to do with you. I don't have a problem with you. I have a problem with your attitude. Do you understand? So I will not tackle you. I will tackle the attitude and how it relates to me. I have jokes about my childhood. I have jokes about marriage. I'm married. Well, though some people don't believe, but yes, I'm very married. Like, I'm very, very married. Like, when I remember how much I've spent, like, oh, this sacrifice that I made. You've been married for long? I've been married for a very long time. And even now that I'm even remembering that, God, see, if you are not married, you, if, uh, nah, I'm just feeling like, only if you are a man, you understand what I'm saying. Because before I used to eat by myself, I would cook by myself. I would be okay. I can, I can just go and, you know, spend money. But now, you cannot just spend money. Are you about to cry? No, I'm not crying because my, I know my wife is watching. My wife and I say, yeah, <laughs> like, you are not a man. You are crying in public. I cannot control it because... You give your wife, can't you give your wife your ATM and you are at home. You are receiving debit alerts. And it's not like you are, I now want to call the bank that somebody is robbing me. I'll now be looking for my, wait, babe, where are you? She'll say, I'm at the supermarket. I say, but you say, what we need is 20,000. They have removed 50. What happened? <laughs> Boy, she's your wife. You cannot complain. You just be looking up to God, like, God. You have married, but you have married. How long have you been married for? A very long time, my sister. In my mind, it's like 30 years, but how old am I? How old am I? In my mind, it's very long. But, but in not, real life? In real, don't say in real life. In real life is my mind. Okay, sorry. But if I look at the age of my children, they are only, the highest is three years old, so I've been married for four years. Four years? Yes, I now. expected you to tell me you've been married for like 10 years. I'm supposed to have married for like 10 years, but my experience is 30 years. <laughs> Don't worry about when I'm married or... I'll my brother, in this day and age, four years is a long time. In this yes, social media, day eh, age, That people important. are even divorcing any Me, I cannot divorce my wife, oh. Eh, like, like, don't... Even cheating is expensive. Cheating is because you have to... My wife is doing the one. She's collecting all the money. 
Nah, yeah, I'm even complaining. Say, I'm not going to have another girlfriend. I'm not going to collect another money. You know, let's, let's be wise. I'll just stay with my wife. Well, I'm, I told her, I said, we are married forever. Have you? Say, yes. Because, you know, sometimes you frustrate yourself to the extent that you'll be looking for the expiry date in your, in your wedding certificate. <laughs> no whether, expiry date, so it's forever. Whether whatever. They, they put it there. But unfortunately, they did not put it. In fact, I was even almost, I remember that they said that everybody that collected certificate at uh, Ikoi that is, um, that you have to collect in local government. So you wanted to be celebrated that you're single? Hey, I'm single again. <laughs> my husband said, oh, no, no, no. They said those that collected in the past one month. It broke my heart. It broke my heart. But I was happy. After saying this thing, you will go, you will find where you will sleep this night. It's no, not no, on my no. show that you but said. Baby, I was, I'm just trying to explain. Remember, I said, can it pay? It's not <laughs> real life. It's like, can it pay? Can it pay means, for example. So everything I've been saying is, for example, I'm just making an example. This is not, I, I love you now with me. Who am I not to love you? Animal place or thing. I love you. <laughs> Having a conversation with comedians is almost never serious. You end up just laughing, but it's been such a delight to have you, Larry. You are an international comedian. You do events in the UK. After this, I'm going to come and sign up with you, you know, so in case you need, like, manager or hype woman. So I, can, I, can find, I can find side also. I, I can employ you. And you do lots of events all the time, even here in Nigeria. And I know you have oh, yes. one coming up soon. So how can yeah. people follow you on social media to find out information of your events? And yeah, all that um, follow me at Larry Greg. At ah, Larry see, I see English just switch now now. Um, in fact, you know what? You know the bad part? You know my wife is not like a full Nigerian somebody. So it's just... It's how just... does your wife that has a British accent cope with you? Thank you. Even me, I don't even know what I said I should do. But I know that I did not say anything too long. You know, other guys, they will have form all the English. And she know all the English. Why are you speaking all the English? Yeah, she know it already. Cool. I stun it to Yoruba. Yeah, sir. Uh, like him, like yeah. <laughs> We can marry ourselves. Uh, you know, when you ask him, okay, so what are we doing now? We are nothing but pencil in the hands of the creator. Yeah. <laughs> and we have you. We are, now we are like viral because we have signed the marriage register. Bam. Bam. Okay, so how can people follow you on social media? Um, you can follow me at Larry Greg on every platform. At Larry Greg on Instagram. At Larry Greg on Facebook. At Larry Greg on Twitter. Or Larry Wadu Gregory on Facebook. And at Larry Greg on Twitter. All right, so support the ministry, support our Nigerian businesses, Please, support, you know, support. follow, show him love. Show me love. They have events coming up in Lagos and in show the UK and everything. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. And in the UK. The I, I like the UK. You like the UK? Yeah, All because right. they are crowded. They used to, they are no, they don't have go slow. They don't Nin have... Nigerian crowd, you have to explain what you are saying. The UK, before you finish, they are laughing. And I'm like, hey, God, I'm funny here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm funny internationally. I'm not saying you should not come in locally. Please, local, 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 please. I need local money. All right, we've had the pleasure of speaking with Larry Gregg, who has sort of, he's thrilled us here on the show today. And we'll urge you to follow him and find out all that he's up to on his Instagram at Larry Gregg. But before we wrap up today's show, we'd like to let you know what's happening today in history. In this month in history, in 1897, the British finally succeeded in overthrowing Obao Von Ramwe of Benin. Thank you very much for that fantastic information. Even me, I did not know it. I'm just learning wow. that. To enjoy more of this, our Ogonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.